Hi, it's Vulcan Lifts here. I'm going to be showing you how to make ice bases. So for the cork pieces, you can buy thinly sliced cork pieces for your basing, which is pretty useful. But I like to have a nice variation because it looks more natural. So if you've got like the two mil sliced cork, that's fantastic. Just put a little bit of it here and there. Um, so for example, on this base, I've used some of the thinly sliced cork here. And this is great for just putting underneath the miniature's feet. However, if you want things to look a bit more exciting, you can use thicker pieces of cork, um, which you can get from larger cork sheets. So I went down to IKEA and purchased myself these big thick uh, cork heat pads. There was three of them for a pound, and these have lasted me a good long time. So I take a big chunk of this off, and I can slice this as well to get thinner slices if I want. But these give you more natural looking rock, or if you've got big chunk of cork you can do stuff with that as well and in this case we want natural looking ice. Other materials used I've got my trusty old school Citadel sand pot this has been with me for a while and I've topped it up with other bits and bobs so it's now a bit of a mixture so it's originally Citadel sand and then I've used stuff like this ballast from Woodland Scenics for some larger pieces of grit and then it's obviously got other cork chunks that I've used um, from chopping up other and making other bases over time. So they are always going to come in useful because they could be the medium sized rocks. Then we've got some thin slither uh, rock uh, type cork from those two mil cork sets. Take a minute to arrange your rocks how you like them. So be mind take your miniature, be mindful of where the miniature's feet are going to be and just roughly have a little play positioning the miniature on the bases to uh, how you like it. The width of, so he's quite on his peg leg, so the width of the, the stance of the miniature is important. You don't want to put the, the rocks too wide apart or too narrow, uh, close together, um, otherwise that could impact it. So for example this rock here, I want that one to be behind the miniature, so I'm just going to grab a different rock. So he's going to be positioned a bit more at the foreground on this one and the rock's going to be behind him. Uh, this one here, you can have it in front of the miniature. So it's just nice to have a little play and think about where you're going to put your cork. So I've put a nice dollop of PVA on each of these bases and I'm just going to use a cocktail stick to just spread it about a little bit. This can get messy because you're obviously you're working with PVA glue but it's all part of the fun of the basin, I think. And it makes a nice change from painting. It doesn't have to be spread everywhere, because remember, we're not gonna put gravel and grit everywhere. We're gonna be making use of the Citadel texture paints on these. So any of the blank areas that we leave um, are gonna have the Agrel and Earth, uh, or Morden Earth, or whichever one, like a crackle base. Um, is what we're going to use. So take your little pot, start positioning where you're going to have your cork pieces. So first one, I'm just going to jam that in there. And then I'm going to take my gravel pot. I'm just going to put the gravel towards the edges. Just so it sits a little bit more naturally. Nothing has to be perfect on these, remember you're just having fun and enjoying the process. Obviously we recommend doing this inside a bit of cardboard or something that you can contain your rocky grit splashes because they will go everywhere.
but having a nice mix of small and medium rocks is perfect. So there we go, that's the first step. Next guys, we've got some Magrel and Earth. We're going to be putting that on the bases around all these blank areas. We're going to be leaving it not too thick, just enough so it's going to have a nice little crack that's going to go around. Check it out. There you have it guys, I used a hairdryer just to make sure that mine cracked really quickly and I could control where I wanted the cracks to appear as well. Um, we're just going to make sure that this is fully dry and then we're going to hit it with a primer. Here we go guys, I've primed these in Halfords Etch Primer Grey. Fantastic spray paint, it's cheap, there's loads in the can and it's very effective for this kind of stuff. It can be a little bit thick if you're not careful and spray it in little small bursts. But for basing it's absolutely perfect and it's set the, the base layer because we're going to be airbrushing on top of this. Here we go, we're on to my favourite bit which is airbrushing. I hate base coating generally speaking so I airbrush whenever possible. I'm just going to get some glacier blue from Game Color, which is a very very bright white with a little hint of blue in it. This is going to establish our main tone so I've blobbed in about two drops there. I'm just going to squeeze some water in. I tend to mix my airbrushing with water just to keep things pure and it works kind of well. Sometimes you might need to use airbrush medium, it depends how thick the paint is, it depends how well it's flowing. I want to try and get a nice even consistency. I pre-mix it before I put it into the airbrush hopper, that way that I'm not going to get any clumps or lumps. I'm just going to test the paint. I want it to be a milky consistency, which it appears to be. If it's too thin, you need a little bit of translucency. So this might be a little too thin, but we're going to find out shortly when we pop it in the airbrush. I'm using an Infinity CR Plus. This is one of the best, if not the best airbrush out of the minute. Uh, there's probably a newer version of this. I have, I've had this for about three years now. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it has like a, a control here, so you can set how much it limits it to how much, how far you can pull the needle back so it's great for doing detail work as well I've got a 0.4 needle in at the minute so it's one of the wider needles um, and I've given it a little clean before I started so I'm just going to pull this straight in might require two passes so we're just going to get straight in It's going to require a second pass, so I'm going to use just push down on the airbrush to start delivering out some air only, just to give it a quick dry before I come in with a second coat. Then we're just going to set that to dry. Next we're going to take three colours, we're going to take a jade green, a dark purple and the amazing game colour turquoise and we're going to turn these into inks. So to do so we're going to take one drop of paint for each one. Then we're going to mix in some water. So it's roughly two to one.
So here we go, I'm just starting to get some of these different washes. I'm just going to start adding them fairly randomly to the miniature. The jade does get dwarfed by the turquoise, so I'm just layering this on first. I don't want the jade to come across too thickly because it's quite a potent colour. When you start adding some of the other colours, the turquoise needs to be the strongest colour that comes through. And we dry brush it back up. We can change the tone if something is too jade, but what you see in natural ice, you see nice gradients of different colours. So it's good to have a, a little mix. And it's just as the, the light sort of refracts through, and I think it adds some nice complementary colours uh, to the ice. So I'm just going to get two hands on here, just get this turquoise all slapped on, let some of the colours bleed into each other. It's all good. The purple is going to be done at the end because we're going to be putting the purple in all the crevices. And then while that's still wet, we're just going to grab that purple. Sort of trying to clean my brush between. It's very messy this, it's good fun. Get your kids involved if you've got kids. Just a bit of fun using inks like this. Just letting them bleed into each other nicely. We're using the purple as a shade and we're just putting the shade a little bit around the rocks and the recesses. Letting the colours bleed into each other. little bit of it on the top of here as well to have a nice little difference in tone if we think any areas need a little bit more of the turquoise on them take the turquoise back in you can just keep mixing these colors they bleed into each other nicely, they complement each other. If I want some of that turquoise to more strongly come through in areas, I'll just layer it up a little bit further. And we're just going to let that dry. Dry brushing begins. I'm going to start with Blue Horror. I'm using a Army Painter Masterclass dry brush, the medium size one. You can use the large one too, but the medium one I find you get a little bit more control. This is going to be a very, very thick dry brush, but you've got to be very gentle with the cork, even though that uh, we have super glued it. Um, but we've just got to be quite liberal with this dry brush so I'm just going to make sure it's a little bit wetter than I would normally. There's a couple of different methodologies for dry brushing. Some people like to test the dry brush on the back of the thumb if it feels wet it's not ready yet. In this case I want it to be a bit wetter because I'm going to be more stippling it as well which is stippling means that you're pushing the bristles into the miniature a little bit more firmly than you would be just dry brushing and the intention is to cover the majority of of this with the detail in this blue horror which will then finish with a white the white is going to be more of a proper dry brush as you'll see and that is just to pick up details at the top 
of that kind of thing. So we'll have to do a couple of layers of this until we get nice overall coverage with the blue horror so that the washes are just sort of poking through. So it's going to involve a couple of going rounds, building it up. but making sure that we're still leaving some of that ink in place. To prepare the dry brush as well, I always have a bit of kitchen towel uh, to my side and I dab the brush in to the paint pot directly. I don't put this onto the water on the wet palette because if it wets it, it starts to make it run a little bit more, and you lose the sort of dry brushing effect. But we are being quite um, forceful with this, just pushing in those bristles, pushing in the paint, but being gentle around the cork where we can. So I'm trying to push it in more on the cork than on the basing area with the grit because we know that that's quite firmly down because I use super glue and PVA glue to like really push that in. There we go. So you can already see a massive difference between the two. And then once we've dry brushed the white on top of this, it will complete the look and it will look more like this. So as you can see, I've left more of the darker uh, inks in there throughout and um, the blue horror is covering the majority of the inked areas, especially on the large flatter areas and it's given it a nice natural look. So as this piece is mainly cork, I'm just going to be stippling this as opposed to dry brushing this. So just pushing it on, just because I don't want to chip away that cork. Remember that this cork was treated with the super glue. So I did pour the runny super glue over the top. If you do snap a few bits off, it's not the end of the world, like I've just snapped a bit off there. Just make sure that you cover that up with some of the base coat that you're doing now so with some of the blue horror or some of the white later down the line you've got to be quite brave with this and quite liberal because obviously you might care about your your inking work quite a bit from the previous step but if you don't do the heavy dry brush it will look completely different to how we want it it's got to be ice with the turquoise colors in the gaps and uh, the purples in the deep recesses to really sell the effect and I think this methodology will look a lot better than your standard sort of ice bases that I've seen other people do because we're using some other colours. The ink steps have added like a bit of a natural gradient uh, to the ice. So obviously as light catches the ice in different areas it's going to... Uh, it gives off different colours. Uh, especially in different times of the day. Plus this is a fantasy world, more colour is better and it makes things pop and look nicer and more interesting. So this is, this technique here, this is not dry brushing, this is stippling, as you can see. Tapping gently or relatively hard actually <laughs> uh, But tapping it in With most of the paint brushed off Is going to give a nice effect You can use stippling to weather things as well Especially on terrain pieces so you can use this to weather stuff nicely or you can use it to highlight very textured stuff 
um, especially cork without snapping pieces off, uh, which I do tend to do because <clears throat> I don't know my own strength sometimes. <laughs> we can use a lighter dry brush for the white highlights a bit later on. So I'm pulling away a few couple of pieces of pop cork like that. And that's fine to be honest because if they're pulling away now that indicates that they didn't receive that much of the super glue and that means that they could potentially break off during gaming um, from you know dropping the model or something catching on it so if it comes off now I can cover the damage as it were by just coating it over with this base coat but if it happens during a game you might have like a big brown spot sticking through your cork so it's better for it to break off now than later. Just going over and just making sure I can get some paint into these very difficult crevices that are appropriate. And there you have it after that step. Next step is a white dry brush. I'm going to use Army Painters Matte White because it's quite thick, so it's quite good for dry brushing. I'm not going to put it in my wet palette, I'm just going to use a little bit of a blister pack that I use for mixing sometimes. So I'm going to get some of that on the brush. This time I am going to be wiping off the majority of it because this is going to be a proper dry brush. So make sure you get a nice bit of tissue paper that's fairly fresh and you want it to be mixing it in. There's going to be a little bit of that blue horror still on the brush. That's not a huge problem. I would not recommend washing a dry brush until you've fully finished it because you're actually going to get a little bit of a transition of colour between this step and the next. So we could do this one and then we can end up getting a pure white highlight at the end. So that's still a bit wet, see it's still coming onto my thumb quite evenly. So I'm just going to try and mix a little bit of it off. That's better. So let's start dry brushing. I'm just going to be quite light with this now, light dry brush. I'm going to stipple in a few places where I want to push the paint in and I'm trying to just catch the uh, edges and the tops of the rocks. This cork piece here is going to be quite, uh, need to be quite gentle with it. So I'm just going to try and push a little bit of the paint onto this as opposed to dry brushing it normally. I'm going to go across just catching the edge and leave that middle section here you get a nice bit of texture then push some of that white paint on here as well Dry brushing is quite 
it's not it's not the most cost effective paint te painting technique I have to say you do tend to use more paint in the mixing process because you're wiping the majority of it off but uh, it does give the effect that you want quite quickly so it's, it does save on time tremendously but you can easily batch paint a quite a considerable number of these bases out using those steps that I've shown you already and I think this comes well pulls together a nice looking easy to do uh, ice style base for any army really the larger the base the more rock and interesting stuff you can apply to it but for 25 mil 30 mils perhaps just go for thinner slices of cork less big chunks that kind of thing just to not overwhelm the base this uh, army paint and matte white does dry brush really nicely like I said it's quite a thick paint anyway uh, it's not one that I would tend to use for regular like layering without watering down considerably. Um, other brands paints like White Scar from Games Workshop does dry brush nicely as well but thins out better uh, for use with normal layering with white. I'm trying to get it to not look like it's been dry brushed so what I mean by that is with dry, when something looks like it's been dry brushed, you get this dusty sort of powdered look. So that's why I'm going back over certain areas and pushing the paint in a little bit more so it doesn't have that effect quite as obviously. It is fine on certain areas because we do have a lot of texture on this base. Catch some of these edges here, Just push that dry brush in, stipple it in a little bit. So there you go, we're showing you two uses of a dry brush, stippling and actually dry brushing. So this brush is very handy. There are very expensive versions of this brush from Artist Opus for example, but you can either get this pack which is quite cheap or just get a makeup brush go to your wife see if you've got any old makeup brushes you're not using give them a good wash and they'll also do nicely I think my first brush that was similar to this was my wife's uh, old makeup brush and that did serve me well for many for, for many moons um, but they tend to be a bit cheaper the bristles start coming off whilst you dry brushing so if you're prepared to pick off little bits of hair that have managed to stick to your miniature, just make sure that you go over and double check that before you uh, finish your project. But with something like this, once this has been used, the, it did shed some um, bristles initially, but uh, after the first sort of usage and then subsequent washing clean, it's been perfectly fine. I've not really had any other bristles you get an occasional bristle that will fly off but generally speaking it's been a very good dry brush set and hasn't been too expensive it's not broken the bank I think it was about nine to twelve pound uh, and you get three brushes with it it is goat hair so goat hair is quite durable especially for dry brushing and it does get a battering but like I say I only tend to wash my dry brush at the end of a of a session because I've just broken that little bit off there. I might just get some super glue and fix that little bit there so it's got nice and spiky or I could pull it off now like that and just get some of that white and just stipple it back over. There we go, just to disguise that little scooter damage there. I've got a little bit of pure white now because 
I haven't washed off a lot of this. So this is the final step. It's just getting some pure white. So it's not really mixed in with any of that blue horror. I've left the majority of it on the brush. I'm just going to tap it on certain areas. See? So tap it into certain areas. So it's thicker paint. There's more paint on the brush. And it's just going to give those last sort of top end highlights. The messier you are, the generally the more natural it is, but just sort of pick where you place these. So I tend to go for the edges, the tops, anything that could be like the top of an area where the light would fall on it. And you're going to get a more natural fall of the light. So that's, that's those bases there. I think they're going to look slightly different to the previous ones that we've done, but that's fine. I want some variation, um, but we've got the colours, we've got the general theme. Um, quite happy with the outcome. I'm just going to take a little bit more white and just add some more into other places. And here's the finished piece. Uh, we've got 10 bases here that are prepared, five that we did on the tutorial, five I've done earlier, and we've rimmed the bases with the black uh, paint. So I use um, Vallejo's Mecha Color Pure Black, I think is a fantastic paint. It comes with a mixing bead in there already, um, and it has excellent co coverage and mixes quite nicely. It also thins down, but for painting black, for example, layering or mixing with other colours, I'd use Avedon Black from Game uh, from Games Workshop, and potentially use the Air Paint version. I tend to use Air Paint versions of the Games Workshop range for most of my painting, and the normal versions of the paints for uh, when you're dry brushing, just because I prefer a pretty thin paint. Um, but this mecha colour is fantastic, like I say, for doing the, the rims of the uh, of the bases. So just take a a, a, a thin sort of flat brush and you can go round and just making sure you catch in uh, and you don't go onto the actual detail of the base. It might take two coats um, but generally speaking it will do it quite nicely and there we have it. They look really fab. I'm going to be painting up the orcs next so stay tuned for another tutorial on some ice orcs to follow. We've already started working on them already as you can see so these will be quick. Um, the bronze tier so uh, it's going to be quite exciting, quite easy to do. Um, we've got some silver tier characters as well in this commission, so that's exciting too. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This is my first sort of tutorial um, Patreon style video, um, and it's going to be out for you guys. Um, so hopefully we'll do more of these. I'm going to try and make time for the Patreon um, tutorials each week.